Hello friends, I want to read to you the prologue in the first chapter of The Boy Who Swam with Piranhas by David Almond. Here's a question. How would you like it if somebody in your house, your Uncle Ernie, for instance, decided to turn it into a fish canning factory? How would you like it if there were buckets of pilchards and tubs of mackerel everywhere you looked? What if shoal, a shoal of sardines was swimming in the bath? What if your Uncle Ernie kept on making more and more machines? Machines for chopping the heads off, cutting the tails off, getting the guts out. Machines for cleaning them and boiling them and squashing them into cans. Can you imagine the racket? Can you picture the mess? And think about the stink. What if your Uncle Ernie's machines grew so big that they took over every room, your bedroom for instance, so that you had to sleep in a cupboard? What if your Uncle Ernie said you couldn't go to school anymore but had to stay home to help him can fish? Sounds good? Ah, but what if instead of going to school you had to start work every morning at six o'clock on the dot and you had no holidays and you never saw your old pals? Would you like that? Would you heck? Well, neither did Stanley Potts. Stanley Potts, just an ordinary kid living an ordinary life in an ordinary house in an ordinary street. Then bang, life turned barmy. It happened overnight. One day, there they were, Stan, his Uncle Ernie, and his Auntie Annie, living in a lovely little terrace house in Fish Key Lane. Next day, wallop, pilchards, mackerel, sardines, and total barminess. Now, Stan really did love his Uncle Ernie and his Auntie Annie, Ernie was Stan's dad's brother. They'd been wonderful to him ever since Stan's dad died in that awful accident and his mom died of a broken heart. They'd been like a brand new mom and dad. But once the barmerness started, it seemed like it would never stop. And pretty soon, it would all get to be too much to bear. Chapter 1. The Factory It all started when Simpson's shipyard shut. Simpson's had been on the river since the year dot. Blokes that lived by the river had been working at Simpson since the year dot. Stan's dad had worked there until the accident. Uncle Ernie had worked there since he was a lad, just like his brother and their dad and their dad's dad and their dad's dad's dad. Then, kapow. It was all over. They made cheaper ships and better ships in Korea and Taiwan and China and Japan. So, Simpson's gates were slammed shut and the workers were given a few quid each and told to go away. And the demolition gangs moved in. No more jobs for blokes like Uncle Ernie. But blokes like Uncle Ernie were proud and hardworking, and they had families to care for. Some found other jobs, in Perkins Plastic Packaging Factory, for instance, or answering telephones for the Common Benefit Insurance and Financial Society, or filling shelves at Stuff Co. or showing folks around the Great Industrial Heritage Museum, special exhibits, super ships shaped at Simpson's ship shipyard since the year dot, some blokes just turned glum and shuffled around the streets all day and hung out on street corners or got ill and started to fade away. A few turned to the bottle, a few turned to crime, and a couple ended up in the clink. And some, like Stan's uncle, Mr. Ernest Potts, had big, big plans. A couple of months after they'd flung him out of Simpsons, Ernie was standing with Stu and Annie, Stan and Annie on the riverbank. The cranes and warehouses were being torn down. Fences and walls were getting smashed. There was wreckage all around. Wharves and jetties were being ripped apart. The air was filled with the noise of, of wrenching and ripping and banging and smashing. The earth trembled and juddered under, under their feet. The river was all wild waves and turbulence. The wind whipped in a distant sea. Seagulls screeched like they'd never seen anything like it. Ernie had been yelling and groaning and moaning for weeks. Now he sighed and grunted and cursed and spat. The world's gone mad, he yelled into the wind. It's gone absolutely bonkers. He stamped his feet. He shook his fist at the sky. But you'll not beat me, he yelled. No, you'll not get the better of Ernest Potts. And he looked beyond the old shipyard to where the river opened to the shimmering silvery sea. There was a trawler coming in. It was red and beautiful, and there was a flock of white seagulls all around it. It was lovely, shining in the sunlight and bouncing on the tide. It was a vision. It was like something arriving from a dream. It was a gift, a glorious promise. The trawler came to rest at the fish key. A massive net full of beautiful silvery fish was unloaded. Ernie looked at the fish. 
and suddenly everything became plain to him. That's the answer, he cried. What's the answer, asked, said Annie. What's the question, said Stan. But too late, Ernie was off. He belted down to the key and bought a couple pounds of pilchards. He belted home and put the pilchards on to boil, boil. He got his wheelbarrow and he belted back to Annie and Stan, who were still standing there on the riverbank. He put a few sheets of scrap metal into the barrow. Annie and Stan trotted it aside as he wobbled back home with them. What are you doing, Ernie? asked Annie. What are you doing, Uncle Ernie? said asked Stan. Ernie just winked at them. He dumped the metal in the garden. He opened his toolbox and took out his cutting gear and his welding gear and his pliers and his hammers, and he set to work cutting the sheets of metal and welding and hammering them into cylinders and curves. What are you doing, Ernie? asked Annie again. What are you doing, Uncle Ernie? asked Stan again. Ernie pushed back his welding visor. He grinned. He winked. Changing the world, he said. He snapped the visor shut again. Half an hour later, he'd made his first can. It was heavy and lumpy and rusty and misshapen, but it was a can. Half an hour after that, the boiled and pulpy pilchards were squashed into it and a lead w lid was welded onto it. Ernie scribbled the name onto the can with a felt tip. Pots pilchards. He punched the air. He did a little dance. It works, he declared. Annie and Stan inspected the can. They looked into Ernie's goggly eyes. Ernie's eyes goggled back at them. There is a long way to go, said Ernie, but it absolutely, positively, definitely works. He cleared his throat. The future of this family, he announced, will be in the fish canning business. And that was the start of Ernie's great venture. Pots spectacular sardines, pots magnificent mackerel, and pots perfectly potted pilchards.